Okay, so welcome back one more time. Um, today we're gonna finish speaking about words. Today we're gonna finish speaking about adjectives and adverbs, something that we haven't really checked. So uh, let's go back a little bit on time. And okay, um, last, last class I think, we were speaking about adjectives and superlatives and uh, comparatives. We were checking how to use comparatives and superlatives to express, uh, to compare pretty much to nouns. Now, this is the final thing that I have to say about nouns. Nouns, uh, sorry, about adjectives. We were speaking about adjectives and this is the last thing that we have to to check about them. It says, adjectives can sometimes alter their endings. Okay, this is important. Uh, normally, you know that the only words that we conjugate are verbs. Verbs can be in the base form, in the present form, in the past form, in the participle form, in the gerund, in the infinitive, and so on. And adjectives, I told you, adjectives are never conjugated. You say, my tall cousins, not my tall cousins. You say, my big cars, not my big scars. You never make them plural. You never, you never make them uh, feminine or masculine. In English, uh, nouns are not masculine or feminine, so adjectives don't really have to, to be according to that. You never have to adapt them to be masculine or feminine or plural or singular. Again, you say the red car, the red cars, the red truck, the red trucks. You, or red, 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 and red. You don't really have to change that. But there are sometimes there are some specific adjectives that sometimes have a couple of endings. We have adjectives that can end both with, let me just ch uh, change my thing here. We have adjectives that end with ing or adjectives that end with ed. Again, these are adjectives, not verbs. They are not in the gerund, they are not in the past, they are adjectives. They don't have anything to do with the time tense. Uh, it says, uh, adjectives can sometimes alter their endings. You have, for example, the adjectives interesting, and I think I've, I missed one letter right here, interesting, and interested, annoying and annoyed, boring and bored, scary, which is a little different, and scared. So what is the difference? Uh, you can say something. Uh, let's, let's just do this thing, this part. Um, Annoying. Do you know what annoying means? Annoying or annoyed are an adjective. Both are the same adjective. They are just different endings, one with ing and one with ed because we use them in a different way. I mean, I, I'll, I'll explain in a moment. But annoying, it means uh, when somebody is like very, very I don't know, you're trying to do your homework, you're trying to concentrate and, you're, and your brother is just right here, just like giving you hell, just distracting you and do, you're very annoying. When something is annoying, it's because it's bothering you. It's like a mosquito, like it's like flying around your head and zzz, you, you listen to him uh, next to your ear. It's very annoying. When something is annoying is that it doesn't give you peace. Like your little brother can be annoying, uh, a commercial can be annoying, a mosquito is definitely annoying, so that is annoying. Then we have another adjective, we have the adjective boring with ing, and then we have the adjective bored with ed. They are the same adjective, and it means when something is uh, slow and uninteresting, if, you're, if, if your class is boring, you say that my class is very boring, uh, that means that you know, like it's not interesting that you feel like the, like time is passing slower. That's pretty much boring or bored. Interesting, well, it's pretty similar to Spanish. When something is interesting, uh, you know, it gives you, it, it makes you interested. So ing and ed. We have two variations. We're going to check when to use interesting and when to use interested. Scary, this is a little uh, different because it's not scary ink. It's scary with R-Y, I don't know why, but it's just like a little uh, irregular adjective. And then we have scared. We, have the, we know that scary is something that gives you, that is like uh, you are afraid of. If you're afraid of something like clowns or wolves or I don't know, ghosts or 
the devil or whatever, that's scary stuff. Like, yeah, like terror, that they produce terror or horror on you. And then we have tiring and we have tired. Maybe you, you, rem maybe you are more familiar with this one, but this is also uh, a noun that we can use, tiring. When you're tired, it means that you are exhausted, that you, are, that you have very low energy because you have been doing something for a long time, probably. So what is the difference between uh, annoying and annoyed, boring and bored, interesting and interested, scary and scared? The thing is that when you're using ing, it means that this, uh, the na remember one thing that is very important. Adjectives are used before nouns and they are used in order to, in order to, let's say, um, we use adjectives to describe the noun. So if you describe a noun, for example, I can describe, I, I will describe my brother. Uh, brother. This is a noun. It can be described. If I, if I say, my annoying brother, ing, I am describing my brother as annoying. This is an adjective and this is the noun. The noun is my brother. My annoying brother is running. Okay, this is a sentence. The subject is my annoying brother. What happens when I use annoying with ing? It means that my brother produces annoyance. It means that my brother is the person that, my brother makes me feel annoyed, okay? When your annoying brother runs, your annoying brother is your brother and your brother produces the state of annoyance. When you say, I feel annoyed, it means that this person, uh, remember that we can use this when it's a complement and it is, it is describing the noun, the subject. I feel annoyed. When you feel annoyed, it means that you feel this feeling. You feel like exasperation. You feel like desperation. You feel like you want to stop doing that. I feel annoyed because my annoying brother is running. Annoying means that this person produces the feeling, produces the state of annoyance. Annoyed, it means that this person feels or experiences the state. Yes, I feel annoyed. Um, Marta was annoyed. Marta was annoyed means that Marta didn't produce that. She wasn't like running and doing like multiple things that were, uh, that were unpleasant. Uh, it means that Marta suffered this state. She felt annoyed. She was like, come on, come on. Does it make sense? For example, we have this other one, boring. The boring class. What is the meaning of the boring class? You are describing the class as boring, yeah? When you say the boring class, it means that the class produces boredom. I feel bored, I am bored, I experience this boredom, I experience this like, oh, this, this will of do nothing. I feel bored because the class is boring. When you use boring with ing, it is producing the state. You don't say the board class. What is the meaning if you say the board class? It means that the class, the noun, the, the class is experiencing the feeling of being bored. The class is not producing the feeling, it's experiencing it. Maybe we are going, the class is normally very entertaining, but the class, these 35 people, uh, we have, I don't know, we have to go to a seminar and listen to somebody and, oh, this class is bored. I, I'm not saying that the class is producing the feeling of bore or boredom. I am saying that the class feels like that. All the individuals that form the class, uh, they are experiencing boredom. They feel bored, right? For example, we have interesting. The 
interesting the interesting girl this girl this noun produces interest she's like she's interesting she looks kind of mysterious she she's something you, you want to speak to her because she's interesting when you say the interested girl this is almost the opposite it means that this girl is experiencing interest like that girl is very is very interested so she feels interest she doesn't uh, produce interest does it make sense uh, aquí hay que tener mucho cuidado imagina que llegas con una chica con un chico y le dices oh luz es muy interesada oh ah oh, uh, bueno luz es muy fastidiosa te van a dar un cachetado un, sí no no se dice no no le dices luz es fastidiosa se dice luz es fastidiada no se dice luz es interesada se dice luz es interesante o eres interesante ¿Sí? ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre interesado y interesante? Interesado es alguien que experimenta, por acá, experimenta la sensación de interés. Esta persona está interesada. Alguien que es interesante produce interés. ¿Sí me explico? Entonces es muy diferente. You have to be careful with that. Then we have another example. We have scary. The scary dog. The scared dog. You have a dog, you have a dog. And you have the adjective scary and you have the adjective scared. What is the difference? In this case, the dog yeah, produces the state. This dog is scary, the scary dog. It's a very big, black, mean dog. When you look at the dog, you feel, you feel fear. It is a scary dog. In this other case, the scared dog, the dog is experiencing fear. The dog is like trembling and just trying to hide. The dog is not producing fear. The dog is experiencing fear. It, it is not the same to be scared than to be scary. If you are scary, maybe you need to change your look. Maybe you need to be more uh, kind to people. If you are scared, uh, well, then you need to maybe try to calm down. Okay, it is, a, it is different. What is the difference between tiring and tired? We have here, I feel tired because the trip was tiring. What is the meaning of this? The trip, the tiring trip. The trip, this noun, a trip, un viaje, is not experiencing any state. El viaje no está cansado. El viaje es cansado. El viaje cansa. Es como el viaje cansante. O el viaje cansado. En español decimos, eh, ah, el viaje fue muy cansado, pero no estamos diciendo que el viaje sufrió cansancio. Estamos diciendo que lo produjo. Si decimos que el viaje produjo cansancio, decimos the tiring trip, or the trip was tiring. Si queremos decir que una persona exprim, experimentó cansancio, decimos uh, the tired person. Yeah, this is the noun. Y aquí tenemos que la persona, esta persona, experimentó cansancio. Entonces, en español decimos mi clase estuvo aburrida o mi clase es aburrida. ¿Cómo lo diríamos en inglés? Mi clase es aburrida. My class is bored. My class is bored. Or my class is boring. Son dos cosas diferentes. Cuando decimos my class is boring, mi clase es aburrida. O sea, mi clase produce aburrimiento. No quiero esa clase, no me gusta. Si decimos my class is bored, mi clase está aburrida. Esto quiero decir, todos mis compañeros sienten aburrición o aburrimiento. Es una cosa diferente. Entonces, En ese caso se usa boring, no bored. Bored es para la persona. 
¿ok? Estos son algunos ejemplos, hay un, algunos cuantos más, tienen que ver con estados, ¿sí? Tienen que ver con estados de ánimo, con cómo se siente. Uh, cuando, que, cuando el adjetivo está con ING, quiere decir que el sustantivo que estás calificando produce ese estado. Cuando está con ED, quiere decir que el adjetivo que estás calificando experimenta ese estado, lo sufre, no lo produce. Son cosas, pues, diferentes, ¿ok? Uh, con eso terminamos la parte de adjetivos y nos podemos mover rápidamente a los adverbios. Vamos a hablar muy rápido de los adverbios. ¿Qué es un adverbio? Cuando pensamos en adverbios, creo que en español, uh, lo primero que se nos viene a la cabeza es adverbios de modo, adverbios de lugar, adverbios de tiempo. Es lo que nos acordamos de nuestra clase o la mayoría de las personas. Y sí, esos son adverbios, pero ¿cómo sirven? ¿Cómo funcionan? Adverbs are very similar to adjectives, ¿ok? But, I mean, they have some things in common, but they have some things that they are totally different. Uh, for example, adje uh, adjectives, they describe nouns, yeah? Again, you can, you can describe the table and you can say the tall table, the fragile table, the metal table. Uh, you can say, you can describe the house, the big house, the small house, the white house, the green house. You can describe things when you're using adjectives. Adverbs are similar because they describe. But adverbs do not describe nouns. Adverbs, they describe verbs. Yeah? For example, it says, an adverb is a word that is similar to an adjective, but they don't describe nouns, but rather verbs. For example, in this case, we have, a, we have an example. We have a door. This is a noun, a door. And this door is not only a simple door. It's an automatic door. So you are describing the door as automatic, the yellow automatic door, the big yellow automatic metal door. All these adjectives are describing the door. You are describing how the door looks. When you say automatic is an adjective, but what happens when you don't use the word automatic? You use the word automatically. Automatically, the door opens automatically. Automatically is not describing the door. It's describing how it opens. How does the door open? How does it open? How does it open? The door, open, uh, the door opens automatically. How is the door? The door is automatic. Automatically is an adverb. It doesn't describe the door. It describes uh, the action. Uh, it describes the way in which the, in which the door opens, okay? Normally, uh, this is the difference, for example, in Spanish, uh, between automático y automáticamente. Si dices, uh, el carro automático, estás describiendo, el carro es automático. Si dices, el carro automáticamente, ¿Automáticamente qué? Ah, el carro sube los, sube los vidrios automáticamente, apaga las luces automáticamente. No estás describiendo al carro ni a las luces, estás describiendo cómo las apaga o cómo, su, o cómo suben los vidrios. ¿Sí me explico? La puerta cierra automáticamente o abre automáticamente. No estás describiendo a la puerta, estás describiendo cómo abre. ¿De qué manera abre la puerta? automáticamente. Este sería un adverbio de modo porque te describe de qué modo abre. Puede haber modos, eh, adverbios de lugar o de tiempo. Por ejemplo, uh, the door always opens. La puerta siempre abre. Always es un adverbio de tiempo. Te está diciendo cuándo abre. No está describiendo la puerta. La puerta siempre nada. La puerta siempre, siempre no es una descripción de la puerta. Siempre es una descripción de cuándo abre. ¿sí? La puerta ahí, ahí es un adverbio de lugar. ¿Sí? La puerta abre ahí o la puerta abre allá. Ok, ese es un adverbio de lugar. Estás diciendo en dónde abre. ¿Sí? ¿Más o menos? Aquí, bueno, esto sería más o menos la, la cuestión. Muchas veces los adverbios terminan con L e Y. Real, really. Automatic, automatically. Uh, close, closely. Uh, por ejemplo, tenemos nosotros el adjetivo good. ¿Se acuerdan? Es un adjetivo para describir cosas. Uh, a good dog. ¿Sí? Aquí, otra vez, good es un adjetivo. Y ya vimos que este, bueno, a good dog o a bad dog, ya vimos que son, son raros. Ya vimos que, por ejemplo, en, en comparativos es uh, 
better o worse. Ya vimos que en um, superlativos es best o worst. Pues en adverbios también son diferentes. No decimos uh, the door opens good. No decimos la puerta abre bien. Decimos la buena puerta, the good door. Good describe puertas. Pero si queremos decir que abre bien, no decimos opens good. Decimos opens well. Well es el adverbio que dice bien. Es la diferencia entre bueno y bien. La buena puerta abre bien. No es lo mismo bueno que bien. Bueno es un adjetivo que describe cosas. Bien es un adverbio que describe verbos. ¿Cómo decimos malo? O, bueno, si decimos malo, decimos bad. The bad door, la mala puerta, la puerta mala, abre mal o de mala manera. ¿Cómo decimos? Aquí sí, badly, de mala manera. The, the bad door opens badly. The, la puerta mala abre mal. ¿Más o menos? En español a veces cometemos ese error. Uh, a veces decimos, por ejemplo, manejo muy rápido. Honestamente, eh, digo, lo decimos muy normalmente y entonces, pues, bueno, ya, ya está como asimilado. Pero gramaticalmente deberíamos decir manejo rápidamente, manejo muy rápidamente. ¿sí? Rápido es un adjetivo. Rápido es el coche, rápido es el caballo, rápido eres tú. El coche es rápido. Yo manejo rápidamente porque no estás describiendo a ti, estás describiendo cómo manejas. Es la diferencia. En español muchas veces los adverbios acaban con ente. Automáticamente, rápidamente, lentamente, difícilmente. En inglés acaban con LI, aunque hay algunas, bastantes excepciones. Pero bueno, casi todos los que acaban con LI van a ser adverbios. Ahora, ¿qué problema, qué problema tiene esto? Tiene el problema... Ah, bueno, primero, los adverbios no solo describen verbos. They describe verbs, but also they can modify adjectives or other adverbs. For example, we have this. It says, uh, let me just, this house and this guy. This is the subject. The verb is, is. This guy speaks. And then we have adverbs. Uh, we say that the house, for example, is very big. This is an adjective. The house, uh, the big is describing the house. This house is red and really big. Red is describing the house and big is describing the house. Yes? Well, very is describing red and really is describing big. This house is very red. Not only red, very red. And what is red? The house. And it's really big. Not only big, but really big. Very is, uh, is describing how red. And really is describing how big. Both red and big are describing the house. Yes, adjectives, the ones in red, adjectives describe nouns. Adverbs describe adjectives or verbs. Yeah, more or less. This guy speaks really ridiculously slow. Okay, so we have this guy speaks slow. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, no, let me change again. Yeah, we have this. Sl uh, sorry, no, no, no. Uh, this guy speaks really ridiculously slow. The subject is this guy. Speaks is the verb. And then we have multiple adverbs. Slowly is a description of how he, how he speaks. How does the, the guy speak? He speaks slowly, not slow, slowly, in a slow manner. We are describing the way he speaks. But, not, uh, but how, how slowly? Ridiculously slowly. Not only ridiculously slowly, really ridiculously slowly. This adverb is modifying this adverb. This adverb is modifying this adverb. This adverb is modifying the verb. So, adverbs can modify adjectives, can modify adverbs, or can modify verbs. Yeah? Really, ridiculously, slowly, very, really, all of these are adverbs. And they are describing the adjective, in this case, 
or other adverbs in this case. Or they can be describing the verb, like in the past example, yeah? The, co the most common adverbs, we have a list of common ad adverbs, really, very, sometimes, always, never, probably, normally, usually, often, still, yet, already. These three, they have an, um, an asterisk because we, we normally use them in the perfect forms. We're gonna check that, check the path with the perfect forms and we're gonna have uh, something about still yet already. And I think there's another one, still yet already, maybe some other one, okay? So is everything good? Well, I don't know what I'm asking, but I hope everything is okay. Again, if you have any, any questions, anything, you can just like write them down on your notebook and you, we can check them specifically when we, when we see each other, when we have um, like presential classes or we have like a, like a meeting or something. Now, finally, well, not finally, but almost finally, there, there is another problem with adverbs. Adverbs, the main problem with them is that they can be placed in different parts of a sentence. So again, for example, in this, in this case, we have our sentence, subject, verb, and complement. Subject, verb, and complement. Subject, verb, and complement. Remember that sentences, to be correct, they have to have, if they are affirmative sentences, they have subject, auxiliary, verb, and complement. So this one, the complement is always optional. So in this case, you have your subject, your auxiliary is do, but you never use it because it's the simple present. In the simple present, we don't use auxiliaries in affirmative statements. And the verb is go out. Subject, the auxiliary again is do. You never use it because this is the simple present. The verb is go out. Subject, the auxiliary again is do because this is the simple present and this is the verb. None of them have complement. The complement is never mandatory. It's always optional. So we don't really need it. But what we need uh, by force is subject and verb. They are mandatory. We have subject and verb. We have subject and verb. We have subject and verb. The problem is that sometimes we have adverbs. For example, the adverb sometimes. Sometimes, uh, sorry, this wasn't it. Sometimes and sometimes. The problem with adverbs is that they can be placed in a different parts of, uh, in different parts, in different places of a sentence, okay? I sometimes go out. In this case, in this case, uh, sorry. In this case, the adverb is in the middle of the subject and the auxiliary. I sometimes do go out. In this case, it's after the verb. I go out sometimes. In this case, it's previous to the subject. Sometimes I go out. The three forms are okay. The problem with adverbs, remember, adjectives, they always come before the noun they are describing. Los adjetivos siempre van antes del sustantivo al que están describiendo. Los adverbios, no. Los adverbios, su gran problema es que no tienen un lugar fijo en la oración. A veces van al principio, a veces están en medio, a veces van al final. Hay algunos adverbios que tienden a ir al principio, otros que tienden a ir al final, pero eso es caso por caso. Por ejemplo, el, el adverbio yet tiende a ir al final de una oración. El adverbio still tiende a ir casi al principio. Pero hay otro montón, como por ejemplo sometimes, o always, o never, que a veces pueden cambiar de lugar. Entonces, ese es el gran problema con los adverbios. Cuando nosotros estamos buscando... Cuando nosotros estamos buscando cumplir con nuestras reglas, a veces estamos buscando, decimos, hay sujeto, auxiliar, verbo, y nos sobra una palabra por ahí. Esa palabra muy probablemente sea un, sea un adverbio. Porque los adverbios, los adverbios son muy jodones porque pueden ir aquí, perdón, porque los adverbios pueden ir aquí, pueden ir acá, pueden ir acá, pueden ir acá, o pueden ir acá. Entonces, a veces los encontramos metidos en la estructura y nos cuesta trabajo encontrar la estructura porque el adverbio 
pues está ahí este, pues estorbando un poquito. ¿sí? Ahora, una parte que es bien importante es que las palabras tienen varias formas. ¿Sí? Ya hablamos de los sustantivos, de los, verbios, de los verbos, de los adjetivos y de los adverbios. Pero una cosa que tienen las palabras es que hay una raíz, como en el español, hay raíces. Y de esas raíces, las palabras pueden tener varios, uh, pueden tener, digamos, varias variantes. Por ejemplo, tenemos el sustantivo decisión. Aquí dice, uh, the decision was made, was made months ago. The decision is the subject. This is the subject. And this is the verb. The decision was made. Actually, this is passive voice, but whatever. So the, the verb in reality is made. Passive voice, if you haven't checked it, it doesn't matter. We're going to check it. Okay. Uh, in this case, we have subject, we, and decided. In reality, is the verb. We decided, and then we have a complement. Verb complement, to move to a bigger house. In this case, decide can be a verb. In this case, we have his decisive action. This is the subject. The subject is the action. His decisive action, yes, and the verb is brought in the past, brought order in the meeting. So we have this word here, um, decisive, is an adjective, is describing the action. How was the action? A decisive action, yeah? Or in this other case, we have she is the subject, sorry, she is the subject, the verb is acted, And decisively will be the adverb. You are saying how she acted. We have two, ad, two, adver, uh, two adverbs, decisively. How decisively? Very decisively. So you have decisively, decisive, decis decided, or to decide, and decision. Tenemos decisión, decidir como verbo, decisivo como adjetivo, uh, decisivamente como adverbio. Entonces, no siempre es tan fácil, ¿sí? El diccionario puede ayudarnos, pero necesitamos saber qué tipo de palabra tenemos. Porque cuando es sustantivo puede cumplir la opción, puede cumplir la función de ser un sujeto. Acuérdense, cuando son sustantivos, pueden ser sujetos. Cuando son verbos, pues, es el verbo. Cuando es un adjetivo, en realidad el sustantivo es este. Y todo completo es parte del sujeto. Aquí este es un adverbio, entonces es parte del verbo, ¿sí? Entonces necesitamos saber qué función está cumpliendo. Y las palabras tienen múltiples funciones. Aquí tengo una tablita, uh, bueno, déjame borrar todo eso, que bueno, si quieren sacarle una captura de pantalla, o si quieren, uh, espero que aparezca completa, uh, porque aquí me, me estorbe esta barra, pero bueno, la voy a quitar. Aquí uh, tenemos una barra, una barra, tenemos una... Una lista de terminaciones comunes para ciertos tipos de palabras. Los sustantivos normalmente acaban con así o ci, h, all, ands, ends, and, and, todas estas son terminaciones comunes para los sustantivos. Pero los verbos también acaban en eight, al igual que algunos, que algunos sustantivos, también acaban en en, igual que algunos sustantivos, acaban en ing, al igual que algunos sustantivos, en ed, er, e, Ify and eyes, ¿sí? Identify, realize, ¿sí? Los adjetivos, aquí tenemos terminaciones comunes de los adjetivos. Y las de los verbos, nada más tenemos tres. LI, que también podría ser un adjetivo. Ward, like toward, or like ward, and, sorry, uh, backwards. O wise, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, or stuff like that. Entonces, bueno, si quieren sacar una captura, esto es demasiado para estarlo checando ahorita. Nada más el punto es que veamos, el punto en realidad era la, la, era la, la diapositiva anterior. Que viéramos que las palabras tienen varias formas. Entonces, sí, bienvenidos, lo siento. 
eso se trata los idiomas. Entonces, hay que, hay que saber identificar. Por eso es bien importante saber el fun las funciones y las palabras. Ahorita eh, hemos hablado un montón de funciones, un montón de palabras. Casi no hemos hablado de tiempos. Los tiempos están aparte. Pero normalmente las clases que ustedes llevan siempre son sobre tiempos y sobre tiempos y sobre vocabulario. Nada más. Ven tiempos y vocabulario. Todo esto es parte del idioma. ¿sí? Ahorita podemos ver. Ah, bueno, disculpen, esto ya son verbos. Son la última parte que vamos a ver antes de meternos a los tiempos. Pero bueno, igual no, no, no tienen que seguir el mismo orden. Pueden ir como ustedes vayan, vayan viendo. Eh, eso es todo. Ya, con adjetivos y con adverbios. Espero que, que estén claros, que tengan sentido, que, que les hayan aclarado alguna duda que ustedes pudieran tener por ahí. Si, si tienen más dudas, si tienen oraciones específicas, ejemplos, cosas que no les quedaron claros, preguntas que me quieran hacer, apúntenlas en su libreta, eh, pónganlas en su celular. Uh, me pueden mandar un mensaje directamente si estamos en el grupo. O, oh, bueno, si no, directamente pueden poner un comentario. Vamos a tratar de hacer más explicando cosas más específicas. Y en las, en las reuniones que tengamos este, online, este, presenciales, bueno, donde pueda yo interactuar con ustedes, ahí vamos a estar también uh, resolviendo algunas de estas dudas. ¿Ok? Espero que, que esto les ayude. Y, pues, bueno, muchas gracias. Nos vemos.